Adventures in Research. This is Paul Shannon bringing you another transcribed story of science produced as a public service in cooperation with the Westinghouse Research Laboratories. And today bringing you the unusual story of an immigrant boy named Michael Pupin who came to America penniless and unlearned, but through determination and industry, rose to fame as an educator and inventor in his adopted land. Some 80 or 85 years ago, in a small Serbian village of Ivor, there lived a farm family by the name of Pupin. Life was hard, and everyone had to do his share of work, even young Michael, 12 years of age. Now, Michael, listen closely to what I say. Yes, Father? I have brought you here tonight to the pasture to watch the oxen. It's very dark and no easy task for a small boy. Now, during the day, the sun and the heat force the oxen to keep cool under the shade trees. But at night, they are hungry and wish to feed. Now, uh, uh, do you see that cornfield over there? Yes, Father. Uh, when a breeze from the cornfield carries the sweetness of the young corn to the oxen, they will stray into those fields unless you watch them. Oh, I will watch them closely, Father. Very closely. Watching is not enough. A greater danger hides in the cornfield. Danger, Father? Cattle thieves. They hide in the cornfields at night, and whenever an ox strays there to feast on the corn... They steal the animal away in the dark. How shall I prevent this? Ah, see this long knife? Yes, Father. Now, I stick it deep into the earth. <clears throat> so. Now, now lie down, Michael, and press your ear against the earth. Close. Now, are you ready? Uh, ready, Father. Now, I will strike the wooden handle of the knife. Do you hear it, son? Well, very clearly. Now, press your ear against the handle of the knife. Uh, tell me, what do you hear now? I... I hear... Yes. It is the sound of the hooves of the oxen moving about in the pasture. <laughs> that is right. Why is this, Father? Uh, in Serbia, among the farmers, it is an old custom. We know that sound travels through the ground far better than through the air. And hard earth carries sound much better than plowed up earth. So, Michael, it is your duty to lie here at night with your ear pressed against the knife's handle. Should you hear the oxen stray away into the cornfields, strike the handle of your knife sharply. Now, that will signal other boys in the pasture nearby, and they will come running to help you. And the cattle thieves, will they not hear our signal? Where they hide... The earth is soft. They will not hear your signal. This was Michael Pupin's first acquaintanceship with the phenomena of mechanical vibrations, a fact which stood him in good stead in later years. A few years later, the Pupin family gave permission to Michael to leave for America, there to seek his fortune. My son, we are poor and therefore cannot send you out into the world blessed with riches. But advice from a father's heart, this I can give to you. Michael, my son, if you wish to make your name in the world, provide yourself with another pair of eyes, the eyes of reading and writing. Learning is the light which illuminates our path through this life, and leads to a future life of everlasting glory. The ship carrying young Pupin to America docked at Hoboken, and the immigrants transferred to Castle Garden to be questioned by the admittance officers. How old are you, boy? Fifteen. What country? Serbia. Well, the immigration law of this country requires that you have sufficient funds on your person so that you will not become a public charge. 
How much money did you bring with you to America? Oh, only this much. Five cents? Why, you must be joking. That is all I have. Do you have relatives here? No relatives. Any friends? No friends. Don't you know anyone in this country? Oh, yes. Yes, in, in, in Serbia, I study in school about Benjamin Franklin and his kite, and I know Abraham Lincoln, and I know Uncle Tom's cabin. <laughs> well, you, you chose good company, boy, but uh, not much help in getting you admitted. Uh, do you have a trade? What does this mean, trade? Well, have you ever worked at anything such as farming, mm -hmm. carpentry, mm -hmm. stonemason, uh, shoemaker, a tailor? Oh, no, nothing. But I will learn. This is what brings me to America, to learn. Five cents to your name. No relatives, no friends, and no skills. Oh, you're a very poor risk. Risk? What? What is this risk? It's... Oh, well, forget it. I'll make an exception in your case. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Michael Pupin was permitted to enter America. To keep alive, he did farm work in Maryland, tended mules in Delaware, painted basements in Philadelphia, and finally found employment in a cracker factory in New York. In the factory, he made friends with a boiler room engineer who took an interest in the young man. That's enough, coal boy. Shut the door. Sit yourself down and rest. Oh. Well, <laughs> you still want to be a fireman when you grow up, Michael? Oh, oh yes. A boiler fireman like you, Mr. Jim. Uh, no, 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 my lad. You must aim higher, much higher. That takes book learning. Here, I, I brought you a present. It's, it's second hand, but it's still good. Oh, a, a book. Oh, thank you, Mr. Jim. It's a dictionary. And the first thing you've got to do is learn English. Every time you come across a new word that you don't understand, you just look it up in this book. Oh, I, I will look it up, yes. Next, you must go to school. That is my dream. A cousin of mine goes to Cooper Union Night School. I'll, I'll talk to him, see about getting you into classes. Oh, thank you, Mr. Jim. I, I wish to learn very much. Well, that's the right idea, boy. This is a growing country. There's opportunity all over this land. Study. Go to school. Prepare yourself for when your chance comes. The boiler engineer, true to his word, got young Pupin admitted to school. Every spare moment at work, he made his young pupil memorize famous personalities and documents in American history. For the people shall not perish from this earth. Very good, my very good. I am speaking English better, yes? Oh, much better. Uh, tomorrow we'll try my favorite poem, The, the Village Blacksmith. Mr. Jim. Uh, yes, Michael? In the library at school is a big picture with many fine-looking men. Some sit, some stand. Uh, what about it? Uh, these men, who are they? Names like McCormick, Morse, Howe, Whitney, Morton. Mr. Jim, what did these men do? Well, uh, let's see. Morse invented the telegraph, McCormick the reaper, How the sewing machine. Uh, most of these names belong to inventors, men of science. Like Benjamin Franklin and his kite? Well, that's right, like Franklin. Uh, this is what I wish to become, a man of science, like these men in the picture. Soon Michael Pupin was just that. A man of science. At 21, he entered Columbia College, winning the coveted Tyndall Fellowship for Advanced Study at Cambridge. Abroad, he became fascinated by the Faraday-Maxwell electromagnetic theory. After a year at Cambridge, he transferred to the University of Berlin to complete his doctorate under the famous German physicist von Helmholtz. On his return to America in 1889, Dr. Pupin was assigned to teach mathematical physics in the new Department of Electrical Engineering at Columbia. With his assistant, Crocker, the two men went to examine their new quarters. Well, Crocker, what do you think of our new home? Uh, the truth? Naturally, the truth. It looks like a cow shed. <laughs> oh, yes, it isn't very large. 
Nor is our laboratory too well equipped. One motor, one dynamo, an alternator, and some measuring instruments. <laughs> and two green instructors. Oh, we will expand, Crocker. <laughs> it's up to us to expand if we want to make any impression upon the electrical art. Oh, we'll expand, Professor. Be sure of that. Yeah, what makes you so confident? You have no idea how rapidly an inexperienced teacher expands when he tries to teach a new subject to pupils who are poorly prepared. The basic theoretical courses in electrical engineering were taught by Dr. Pupin in the morning. In the afternoon, he gave laboratory instruction. In the evening, working in the cow shed, he found time to carry on experimental research. And from this came Michael Pupin, the inventor. All of us know today that it's a simple thing to tune a radio. Just by twisting a dial or pushing a button, we get music, drama, sports, like magic. But when wireless or radio first came into being, this magic was unknown. A big problem was how to send and receive messages so they would not interfere with one another. This problem was solved by Michael Pupin. In an electrical circuit having a coil and a condenser, the moving electricity has a definite inertia and a definite electrical stiffness. Hence, it will have a definite pitch or frequency, just like a tuning fork or more even a, a vibrating knife stuck into the hard ground. It is obvious, therefore, that an electrical resonator the pitch of which can be changed by adjusting its coil or condenser, or both, is a perfect parallel to the acoustical resonator. I call my invention selective tuning. Electrical tuning was not the only invention of the immigrant inventor. He perfected a type of telephone repeater, or induction coil, which first made possible long-distance telephony. The electrical vibrations in a telephone line can be likened to the simple mechanical motions in a vibrating string. Small weights placed along the string at several intervals of the wavelength will enable the desired frequencies to be transmitted much more efficiently than otherwise. So it is with the telephone line. Localized induction coils placed at predetermined intervals in the line will maintain the desired tone distinctions and power of signal. Michael Pupin was indeed a versatile man of science. He discovered secondary X-ray radiation and made a long list of contributions to the wide field of telegraph, telephone, and wireless communication. And honors and prizes came to the immigrant inventor. The Elliott Crescent Medal for Distinction in Physics. The Presidency of the Institute of Radio Engineers. The Edison Medal. The Hebert Prize of the French Academy. The Presidency of the New York Academy of Science. Eighteen honorary degrees. Scientist, inspiring teacher, inventor. Such was the career of Michael Pupin, the one-time Serbian shepherd boy who made of his opportunities in a free land an inspiring adventure in research. And that's today's Adventures in Research, produced in cooperation with the Westinghouse Research Laboratories. These programs are broadcast to Armed Forces personnel overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week for another transcribed story of science on adventures in research. Thank you.